Good risings, kings, queens, prince, princess. Thank you for inviting them to One Worship, One Prayer Discipleship Center. Now I'm going to turn it over to Queen Rassi. Good risings, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in. And like she said, one worship, one praise this morning. I'm going to read a little scripture. I mean, a little passage out of uh, our daily bread. And then I'm going to read uh, a scripture with it. Say that. Uh, first, let's pray a sin. Let me do that. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us. I ask you to continue to watch over us. I uh, ask you to uh, bless us to get something out of this message today. Uh, thank you for just everything that you're doing for us. And we rebuke anything that's not of you. And I ask you to guide us in the direction that you want us to go. Amen. All right. I'm going to read for you today my little passage. The title is called Strong and Courageous. The scripture I'm going to read is Joshua 1 and 5. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's Joshua 1 and 5. Each night, as, a, as young Caleb closed his eyes, he felt the darkness uh, envelop. The darkness. The silence of his room was regularly suspended by the creaking, the creaking of the wooden house. Then the bats in the attic became more active. His mother had put a night light in his room, but the young boy was still. But the young boy still feared the dark. One night, Caleb's dad posted a Bible verse on the footboard of his bed. He read. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, for the Lord your God will be with you. Keep, let that soak in your head. Be, don't be afraid. Don't you got to be strong in everything that you do, and just know that God is with you in everything that you do. Caleb began to read those words each, each night, and he left the promise from God on his footboard until he went away to college. In Joshua one, he reads. Uh, we read of the transition of leadership to Joshua after Moses died. The command to be strong and courageous was repeated several times to Joshua and the Israelites to uh, empathize its importance. Surely they felt, uh, what is it? Tra 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 no, tra uh, what is it? Trap. I just said the word. They felt fear. Basically, that's what the word means. As they faced an uncertain future. But God reassuredly said, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave nor forsake you. What are your deepest and most... In your deepest and most... Fears, your most fears. How can you meditate on God's promise to help you through that? Just ask yourself those questions. What is your fear? And just know that God is with you through all of your fears. And he will get you through it. And he will take, a, take them away. All right. Thank you, God, for waking us up this morning again. And I hope you guys got something out of that. Now we're going to have the uh, prayer from Armani. No, the... Um, We'll have the mission statement from LaKayla, Princess LaKayla. One worship, one praise stands for we have now worship, we have now praise. Started by God, revealed to Messenger Day and Queen Vassie. The two started this ministry to reach the ones who are from the same background and are the ones who are looking for spiritual teaching. This ministry will help 
all that will love to grow and go forward in the name of the Father in heaven. One worship, one praise is pronounced. One worship, one praise to civilize that we all must be in one spirit to come together in one praise to our God. So all are welcome to join us in unity with oneness. In this ministry, we will address each other as king, queen, prince, and princesses in honoring of the power and strength that lives within us. Hello, everybody. How is everybody doing this rising? Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I want everybody to know that these babies are doing a beautiful job at giving God the praise. They ask me every day, can they do something according to the, the worship and what's going on? And I thank y'all for that. I thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Alea. Uh, thank you, Armani. She did the prayer, so that's okay. You're going to be all right. You can pray when I get done uh, uh, doing the word, all right? Keep your eyes and your mind focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. But we ain't going to be before you guys long. Um, uh, I really couldn't didn't catch the uh, the uh, the what's the name of what Isha was talking about? I didn't catch the title. Be strong and courageous. That is very important when it comes to the Holy Spirit. You have to be strong. You have to be strong. If you don't have strength, God said he'll be your strength for you. But that's neither here nor there. I would like to thank y'all for vibing into One Worship, One Praise Discipleship Center where we only teach the Bible and where we only uh, give God the praise. I'm going to take this off. I'm getting a little warm. But thank y'all for vibing in today. Uh, let's see right here. We're going to get on with this message. Um, today we're going to be speaking on Revealing a message. The reason I chose or God, I believe God giving me this topic is because everybody has a message relating to the uh, relating to the Holy Spirit according to what God has given them. Revealing a message. The message that you have may be for somebody else as you correct yourself and also it can be for what's in your family inside your house. Revealing a message. Now, we're going to go to Job. This is going to be my, my, my basic scripture, but we're going to go somewhere else too. But we're going to go to Job, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse, where it speaks on how the, the mysteries of God was revealed, but it says he reveals mysteries from the darkness and brings the deep darkness into light. So messages that are revealed from the Holy Spirit are to bring the, the people out of bondage, out of darkness, out of sin, to put them in position to be ready for the life. Now, the, the, this this character Job. Job was a. Let me give you a little background on Job. Job was an upright man who shunned evil, righteous guy who shunned evil. Lord praising God, he had whatever he wanted when he asked God, and then he also lost everything when it came to God. But he told his wife because she was trying to convince him to curse God and die. This is just a little summary of Job told his wife that uh, you sound foolish. I'm not going to curse who's revealing me these messages that are helping my family, that is building my strength, that is pushing me to a level where I don't have to worry of these things that are in this world. 
God is doing some things. God is doing some things. That's basically what Job was trying to tell us. If we stay focused and we keep on the past in the uh, 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 in the mission that God has given us, that the message that uh, excuse me, the messages or uh, or the revelations that revealed to us can help us, not only us, but help our family that is in our house. So when you are connected to God and you have been revealed these messages and you do not go forward, you will be like Jonah. He going to trap you to where to you only think about the messages that have been revealed to you from him to where you are stuck and cannot go forward because all of the strength, the power, the, 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 the revelations, the messages are stored in you. And only when some people can get out of darkness is by you revealing a message. Now, again, in Job, the 12th chapter, the 22nd verse, it says, he reveals mysteries. Mysteries. He reveals mysteries. Uh, give me the definition of mysteries. Come on. Somebody. He reveals mysteries from the darkness. But you got to be close in order to receive these revelations. Let me give you a definition of reveal. The definition of reveal. To make known to others. So that is short of revelation. Reveal is the short word for revelation. Now it says these. And now look, it says. It's John the 12th chapter 22nd verse. It says he reveals. It says he makes known to others. That's what reveals is the de that's the definition of reveal it he makes known to others mysteries from the darkness now now in order to 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 know what's going on in a situation you have to be on the outside of the situation have you ever had somebody say i can see what's going on because i'm not in the midst of of that situation. I'm the outside character. I'm the character that is looking at what is going on. So God is telling us once we come out of the darkness, he reveals us messages from the darkness because we're not in the darkness. To, uh, and these messages are revealed only to bring people out of darkness. Now let me see that so I can get the definition of mystery. The definition of mysteries, something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. So, God reveals something that is difficult or impossible to explain from the darkness. He reveals these difficult things from the darkness and brings them to the deep darkness into the light. Again, the definition of mysteries. I wasn't trying to go in so hard, but this is important. The definition of mysteries. It says, something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. So you have to be according to the Holy Spirit in order to receive the revelations from God. That's why we got miscommunication. That's why we got misguidance. That's why we got misinterpretation because there's no connection with the Holy Spirit. We all, as people say, we have been revealed all type of messages. But how is it revealed to you if it's not from God and you say you're of God, but you're not connected to God? So those revelations are from the demonic spirit. Now, the second definition of revealed. Now, I gave you the first definition of revealed. That's to make known to others. It said in Job, the 12th chapter, in the 22nd verse, it said, he reveals mysteries. So he makes known what cannot be explained from the darkness. God makes known what cannot be explained from the darkness. Only to the ones that are of the Holy Spirit. Again, this, this is coming out of Job, the, 
the 12th chapter. And Job was a, a just man, upright man, a man who shunned evil. So if he is speaking, Job is speaking these things, he said, he's saying that I don't have to be a part of the wickedness to know how to change the wickedness because God has showed me. Showed in his says, he leads me. Now, the second definition of reveal. A final revelation of information. A final revelation of information that has previously been kept from the characters of viewers. Mm. So this information has been kept from those that have been trying to receive receive these revelations, but they have no connection with the Holy Spirit. Now, check this out. If Job wasn't a part of the Holy Spirit, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have seen the revelations that, 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 that God has given him through the sickness, through the, 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 uh, the tearing down that Satan tried to do. He wouldn't have seen these things if he was not connected with the Holy Spirit. Job was, was a man that, 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 that God bragged on. God bragged on Job. He said, he said, have you tried my servant Job? He said, have you tried my servant? Now, when God speaks of you, when God takes and tells Satan, oh, yeah, you done tried everybody, but you ain't checked out my boy. This is my partner. This is who I rock with. He rock with me every day. He told Satan, and Satan said, ha, ha, let's see what kind of message he get out of these revelations. Now, I'm going to give you the definition of message. Again, the topic of this sermon is revealing a message, revealing a message. Every message that has been revealed to you is not from God. That's why we got people running into the wall because the life is getting hard because the people saying that it's from God when we know you ain't a part of God. Stop getting in front of these people, lying to these people. All, all good revelations is from God, but you have to be connected. Job was connected with the spirit. He was not only, con he conversed with God. He spent time with God. He gave his all to God. That's why he was revealed the mysteries. It said, now let's give the definition of message. A verbal, written, or recorded communication sent to or left for a recipient who cannot be contacted directly. So God sends these revealed messages to the people that he's not connected with so they can get in connection with him. He said, I'm going to send somebody I'm connected with to get these people that have no connection so they can be connected. Y'all remember the, uh, the singular uh, 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 commercial? This was before AT&T took over. It was a singular cellular device where the, it was saying raising the bars if you connect it. It got one bar, two bar, three bar, four bar. That's how it is in God. Once you become connected, your bars go up. The revelations get stronger. Your fight get tougher. Because Satan now sees that God is in connection with you. He sees that you have the ability to see the revelations that have been revealed from the darkness to keep the darkness away. God only can do that. Now, 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 let's go to, I want to go to, go to, uh, Daniel, let's go to Daniel, the second chapter. Daniel, the second chapter, starting with the first verse. And it says, in the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled, and he could not sleep. So King summoned the magicians, the enchanters, uh, the sorcerers, and astrologers. To tell him what he had dreamed. 
when they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. Check this. When you have no connection or no communication, when you have nothing in response to God or what he wants you to do, this is what he does. He sends people to reveal the message he is trying to give to you. This is what's happening in Daniel, the second chapter, uh, uh, where he was speaking on how the king, the king had this dream and nobody, astrologers couldn't even uh, uh, interpret this dream because there has to be a connection to the Holy Spirit in order to get these revelations that God is giving you. Come on now. It says in the fourth verse, it says, Then the astrologers answered the king, May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream. And we will interpret it. These are astrologers. And they couldn't even interpret this dream. Because all, and let me go back. Let, 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 let me show you why they could not interpret this dream. Let me show you. Go back to Job, the 12th chapter, the 22nd verse. And it says, he reveals mysteries from the darkness and brings the deep darkness into the light. So basically, when Nebuchadnezzar was getting this dream, it was from the darkness to bring him out of the darkness to put more light on what God was wanting him to do. But he had to have some connection. That connection, like I said, was singular. Those bars had to be up. You have to be connected. If you don't have uh, internet or, or your phone is not on, or if I didn't have service, I have to be connected to what? Wi-Fi in order for these things to work. Now, uh, uh, he said in verse, uh, verse uh, 5, a second Daniel, of the, uh, the, the Daniel, the second chapter, Said the king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your house turned into pals or ruble. But it, it says, but it will receive. It says, hold on, hold on. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Now, this is what I'm saying. When you have some strong revelations from God, but you have no connection with God, this is what happened when you got all of these people saying that they are of God, but they have no connection to the Wi-Fi, to the Wi-Fi. They have no connection or communication with God. They are steady saying that they are from God, but they don't understand or cannot interpret it, the revelations that God has given them. So that's when you have people led astray. That's when you have all of these people clashing with each other because of bad interpretation of revelation. Again, the topic of this is a revealed message. A revealed message. Now, now, now. Keep coming on. Come on. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep staying with me. Stay with me. Uh, 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 it says in verse 7 of Daniel, the second chapter. Come on. Now, I'm trying to show you that a message has to be revealed from God in order for you to understand it. And if you are not in the Holy Spirit realm, you will not understand these revelations. You will get bad interpretations. So all of these messages that are coming from these pastors and all of these preachers, when they send them up and they go forward, if you are not connected with the Spirit, you will not understand or understand what they are saying. Now, Daniel, the second chapter in the uh, seven verses says, one more, it says, once they reply, let the king tell us, tell his servants the dream, and we will interpret it. Then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, 
There is only one penalty for it. You will be conspired to tell me misleading. Ooh, check this, check this, check. I was just speaking on this, check. It says, you have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things. Check, check, check. Hoping the situation will change. So, so then, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king. This there is no one on earth who can do what the king has asked. Hold on, look, look. The king told him, he said, Look, I had the dream. Yes, I did. I had the dream. Now I need you to tell me my dream. But this is the only way that you can do this because you have to be connected to the Holy Spirit. Have to be connected to the Holy Spirit. This is what Nebuchadnezzar didn't understand that these dreams uh, are from the Holy Spirit. Now, hold on. Let's go back. Let me tell you what I'm saying. I'm, I'm going to keep referring back to Job, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse where he said, it says, he reveals mysteries from the darkness and brings the deep darkness into light. Come on, come on. If you know this king, listen to what he said. All because they couldn't interpret his dream, he was going to kill him. But check, let's keep reading. Now, I'm speaking on a revealed message. Now, now uh, revealed means to make known to others. It means to make known to others. Uh, and then it all says, and then also the uh, second definition of reveal is a final revelation of information that has been previously been kept from the character's view. Come on. Now, now let's go back to Daniel. We back in Daniel. We back in, I'm just breaking it down for the ones that are just catching on. Now, you got a lot of people saying that they are according to this Holy Spirit, but they don't know how in order to, uh, I mean, know how to receive and go forward with their messages. Now, check this. Again, it said, it said, now, look, 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 look. the king told him, if you do not give me the right interpretation, it's death for you, brother. I don't care what you say. I want to know what God is. He said, it's something about this dream because it was deep. He said, it's something about this dream because it keep happening. He said, it's something about this dream because it's been on my mind. But the king didn't know that the astrologers and all of those people with these high doctrines couldn't even touch it. This is when it comes to the Holy Spirit. They, you can have all the doctrine degrees and psychology and theology and pathology and mythology, all of those degrees. But if you are not connected with the Holy Spirit, the message that you are revealing is still going to be as dry as it came. Come on. Now, 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 let's get back. Now we are, we are, we on, we on verse 10 of Daniel, the second chapter, verse 10, of Daniel, the second chapter. And it goes on and it says, it says, the astrologers answered the king, there is no one on earth who can do, the, do what the king has asked. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any musician or enchanter or astrologer. So this is the only king that has asked such a thing in all the time. He said, no king has ever asked this, but this is God. God pushing this king to find out that the spirit, that the spirit, look, look, look we coming from Daniel. Look, look, you're going to see Daniel come and show up and show out with that Holy Spirit because he's connected. He converses. He spends time with the Holy Spirit. In order to understand these revelations, you have to be connected to the Holy Spirit. He said, nobody of this time. No one. He said, now verse 11, he said, he said, what, what the king, hold on, what the king asks is too difficult. This is what the, these people are saying. So what the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal. What's the definition of reveal? To make known to others. It said, no one can make known to others what the king has asked. But when you connect it, when God reveal a message, check, check. 
It said, no one can reveal it to the king except God's. No one can reveal this interpretation except God. It said, G-O-D, little G-O-D-S. And it says, and they do not live among humans. Oh, check it out. Come on, come on. Now let's bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Verse 12, it says, this made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the ex execution of all the wise men of Babylon. Check. He was so mad that he wanted to see what this interpretation is, but you got to be according to the Holy Spirit. Like I said, you got all of these people getting up in front of these people, leading them astray, and they don't have a clue of a connection on what they have with God. They don't sit down and communicate with God. They don't try to yield their thoughts to how God wants them to be yielded. Now, come on. And they said it made the king very angry. He wanted to kill and execute all the wise men of Babylon. Verse 13, it says, so the decree was issued to put the wise men to death. And men were sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. Because Daniel was one of the wise men. Come on. But look, he wasn't trying to say he had, uh, uh, he wasn't an astrologer. He wasn't an enchanter. He wasn't the, the magicians. He wasn't none of that. He said, I'm just a man of God. <coughs> it says when Eric the commander of the king's guard had gone out to put the wise man of Babylon to put to death the wise man of Babylon Daniel spoke to him with wisdom intact people think that you can read the Bible and gain wisdom People think that you can read all of this stuff of the world and gain wisdom and knowledge. No, wisdom only comes from God. Wisdom only comes from God. Now, let's keep reading. It says, uh, it says, it said he, he, he put to death the wild man. But then you spoke to him with wisdom intact. He asked the king's officer, why did the king issue such a harsh decree he says Arioch then explained the matter to Daniel at this Daniel went in the king went into the king and asked for time so that he be that he might interpret take interpret the dream for him then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends. Was that Hananiah, Michelle, and Azariah? He argued, he, no, he urged them to be placed for mercy from God in, in heaven concerning this mystery. Again, they go that word mystery. It, it said, God, we're going to look. It says concerning this mystery, so that at, so that he and his friends might be executed, might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse nineteen. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, "Praise be the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are." Pissed. Let's say that again. It says, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are His. Wisdom and power are His. Now, this is what I was trying to explain at the beginning of the message. That in order to say you have a revealed message that is from God, you have to be in God according to how God wants you to move. But we got a lot of these people that will get up and interpret revelations the wrong way. And it'll lead the flock, lead the realm, lead all of these people down the wrong path. Calm down, money. It'll lead you down the wrong way. 
if you're listening to bad interpretation of a revelation. Every time you go into the house of God, that is a revealed message from God, if he's according to God. Now, if it is not according to God, then you will get the wrong interpretation. Now, it said in verse 21, he changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things he knows what lies in the darkness and the light dwells in him. That's, re that's, that's, that's according to Job 12, 22. Now, if you were seeing when I was reading, that was my base scripture, Job 12, 22. Let me go back to that. And then where was I at? Then I'm going to come back, 22. Then the, 20, uh, the second chapter, 22nd verse. Then I'm going to come back to that. Now, listen to what Job, the, 20, the uh, 12th chapter and the 22nd verse said. He reveals mysteries from the darkness and brings the deep darkness into light. Now, go back to Daniel. The second chapter in the 22nd verse, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in the darkness and light the wells within the him. I thank and praise you, God. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Now, I spoke on a revealed message, revealing a message, the definition of revealed to make known to others, a final revelation of information that has previously, previously been kept from the characters of viewers. Then it goes on, a message, a verbal, written, or recorded communication sent to or left for a recipient who cannot be contacted directly. Come on now. Came from Job, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse. He reveals mysteries from the darkness and brings the deep darkness into light. Go back. And then I went to Daniel, the, uh, the second chapter. And I love what the 22nd verse, because it, it's complying with Job, the 12th chapter and the 22nd verse. But I'm going to read that again. It said, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. So we got to understand, if we are not trying to get connected to God, some of these messages have bad interpretation. We got to get connected. So when somebody give a message, we will know the interpretation that God is wanting us to have. Our perception, what God wants us to have. But we as a humanity, we rather just listen to what the preachers say, what the deacons say, and not go and get connected ourselves. You got to get connected for yourself so you can be the message. Most of the time, half of the time, majority of the time, you are the message. I say this all the time. You may be the only book that people read. You may be the only book that people read. So take your time out. Get connected. Irrespect it. Get communication. Stop waiting. Don't worry about who's hating because you're starting to relate. Let God lead you. So you can get a message revealed to you. Let God build you. So you can be built how he wants you to be built. Stop. I'm not saying all pastors and leaders is, is uh, leading people astray. Because there is some that is really according to the Holy Spirit. But you get according to the Spirit. So when the message goes forward, if the interpretation of the message is wrong, you will know. The astrologers in Daniel, the, the second chapter, and the musicians, they couldn't even explain. And they had doctors and, 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 and degrees and things of that nature. But they took a man that was according to the Holy Spirit. One man, little old Daniel. Little old Daniel. They took Daniel because God was with him. 
And it's, it's a lot of people that say this to me all the time. Oh, you don't have no education. You ain't graduated. It doesn't matter. This is a proven fact that it doesn't matter. The earthly education. Get educated of God. Let God edify you. Don't worry about what the people say. All of these degrees don't make you uh, 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 high in the realm of God. What makes you high is you receiving the Holy Spirit. You taking that tactic and putting it into action and receiving what God has for you. No theologist, no psychologist, and no archaeologist can touch the Holy Spirit. They can read, research, and try to do all the things, but if you are according to the Spirit, it's going to be in you. They can put it on them as much as they want. Wear their suits, wear their ties, show up how they want to show up and do their things, but it still doesn't matter if the spirit is not there. So you can learn all of this knowledge of the world. It is meaningless. It has no meaning to these knowledge of the world. But when you start to put yourself where you can receive and be the message of God, then you will see that it doesn't take a degree. It doesn't take paper certificates. It doesn't take these things to be according to the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is submit yourself. All you have to do is acknowledge, praise, converse but you have a lot of people that would tell you that it takes paperwork to give a message no everybody has a message in them if they are according to the Holy Spirit so it doesn't take no paperwork it doesn't take a marriage all it takes is commitment dedication and appliance to the Holy Spirit so I want y'all to take that in. Don't let none of these deacons, preachers, astrologers, psychologists, theologists tell you that you have to get all of these paperwork, all of these things. Not saying Daniel wasn't a smart man, but he, he didn't say. It didn't say. It didn't say he was an archaeologist. It didn't say he was those things that he asked the other people. But it, guess what it did say? It said he was going to go get the wise man. And guess what he told? They, guess what name came up? He said, we're going to put out a hit on the wise man. And guess who name came up? Daniel. And guess what Daniel said when it comes to wisdom? He said, wisdom in power is God's. Wisdom and power is God's. So check this out. If wisdom and power is God and you have no God, right? You have no God in you. It doesn't matter what book you read, what school you go to, what affiliation or organization you're affiliated with. If you do not have the power of God, you will not have wisdom. If you do not have Whew. I'm going to just read this and then I'm going to close out because it's really important. I want y'all to look for yourself. Seek for yourself. It's time for y'all to be the message. These you, Everybody talking about the preachers. Everybody talking about the deacons. But you won't stand up and get the message for yourself. Stop talking about, stop trying to be, and you be what God wants you to be. Don't let these people try to brand you and make you into them when they don't even have the spirit. But let's read, I'm going to read this and then I'm going to close it out in prayer. It says, Daniel the second chapter, 22nd, I mean, no, let's Daniel the second chapter in the 21st verse. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and rises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discernment. Gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. And I'm going to close there. I want to thank everybody, you know, for 
catching this vibe because it's important to know that every message that go forward does not have the died interpretation behind it. Every leader that you're going behind. The king was a leader. Had no knowledge, no wisdom. Nebuchadnezzar was a king, but he didn't understand the spiritual principalities. He didn't understand that God gives wisdom. God gives knowledge and power. He didn't understand that, but he knew that Daniel was a wise man. He knew. Because like I said, when they said we're going to put a hit out on these bros, bro, anybody that said they wise, anybody, he didn't say that Daniel was an archaeologist. He said the wise man, and then they said Daniel and his crew. He said, we know somebody that's wiser than these archaeologists. That's closer than these archaeologists, these, these people that claim they got degrees. All you need is the spirit. But I'm going to close out. If you would like to donate, our donation thing is up there. Our donation goes toward the community events. And I would love for you guys, I would love I would love for you guys to donate, help us out, help out our ministry so we can keep going forward and helping these homeless people and things of that nature. You know, we, we are a ministry that don't broadcast all of the help that we do because that's not important. We are a ministry that really seeks God and really want you to know about God. So all of those things that are going on at probably your ministry we don't do but God in heaven I thank you for this opportunity I thank you for just blessing us with this beautiful message I ask you to bless those that are watching I ask you to just continue to keep us in your arms of, of protection watch over everybody that is according to the Holy Spirit I ask you God to pour down your love your grace your mercy down upon us God I ask you to touch everybody that received this message and is going to go forth in your name. Touch everybody on these out here that is homeless, everybody in these hospital beds. I want you to just touch everybody that's going forth in your name. Touch every household that put you in it. God, I ask you to just bless them to see that these seasons is important. These seasons, the time. Is important. They bless them to see that they have to understand season, time, and manner. God, I ask you to just open up the floodgates of heaven and pour down on us. In the name of God, we we'll rebuke you, Satan. Thank you, God. Amen. I really, really want you guys to really go back and study that again, because you never know. You may be setting up under somebody that is not revealing the interpretation correct. And I want you guys to be led right. I don't care about this one worship, one praise discipleship center. We don't care about following. We don't care about you coming to our facilities and things of that nature, our programs. No, we don't care about none of that. All we care about is you receiving the word. If you get the word, it's time for you to go out and give your message. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. God bless.